ex-U.S. Army terrifying UFO encounter saw a huge monolithic slab of alien technology in deep underground base in North Carolina. On June 12, 2023, at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., Dr. Stephen Greer, a renowned founder of the Disclosure Project, delivered an, un an exceptional presentation unveiling compelling evidence related to covert and unauthorized black budget projects associated with UFO UAP operations. For 33 years, Dr. Greer has been dedicatedly working as a volunteer for the Disclosure Project. His last event was conducted 22 years ago on May 9, 2001, where 22 individuals from various government sectors participated. In a three-hour-long event, Dr. Greer has recently presented his investigations on secret programs, and he was joined by six courageous whistleblowers who shared compelling information about covert operations. In the, this long disclosure event, one of the most compelling testimonies was given by D.C. Long, an Army combat veteran who served in the U.S. Army at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. From 1997 to 2013, he was medically retired due to injuries sustained during a combat jump. His father was also a government contractor at Fort Bragg, adding an interesting connection to the military base. D.C. claimed he was in the service when he and his father, a government contractor, were allegedly cont uh, contacted by the U.S. Army to visit Fort Bragg to set up a shoot house and an indoor live fire range at the training facility. D.C. and his father were allegedly escorted by two different people at a classified location known as Range 19 at Fort Bragg, North Carolina in late 2010, early 2011. Upon their arrival, they were taken through a freight elevator to an underground facility. The place appeared ordinary at first, but soon they discovered a, a peculiar site, a monolithic slab suspended in midair with nothing supporting it. The sensation of intense vibration in DC's body added to the surreal atmosphere. Surrounding the slab were boulders with strange black boxes on top, seemingly related to levitation technology. DC recalled his astonishment, saying, I glanced up underneath it, and there's absolutely nothing underneath this that damn thing, nothing holding it up whatsoever. The enigmatic slab was about 20 feet long, 7 feet tall, and remarkably heavy. It would have been impossible for any human to lift or move it without significant equipment. The scope of equipment that would t take just to get it off the ground at this point, I'm still down on my knees and I'm looking... There's absolutely nothing in there, everything just vacated. It looked like a giant granite slab, the soldier recalls, but the sheen on it caught my attention the most. It was like it had a smooth, translucent surface, and there was something behind it. This massive monolithic slab held an inexplicable allure that both intrigued and bewildered them. As they explored further, they noticed two individuals behind the slab effortlessly, effortlessly spinning another massive boulder with one hand. The soldier described how those men displayed incredible strength, casually manipulating objects that seemed impossibly heavy for human hands. The escort's urgent prompt to move on uh, prevented them from investigating further, leaving them with, the more, with more questions than answers. After spending a mere 15-20 minutes in the underground facility, D.C. and his father returned to the hangar, only to find that everything they had witnessed earlier vanished without a trace. The, monolith the monolithic slabs and boulders disappeared, leaving no sign of their previous presence. We weren't even a hundred yards below, the soldier said. Whatever they were taking out, we would have heard it, but it was dead silent, like there was nothing there at all. Intriguingly, Less than 30 minutes elapsed since they had first encountered the mysterious granite slab and the extraordinary feat of strength displayed by the unknown men. The absence of any construction equipment ruled out, ruling out sound muffled below strengthens the enigma surrounding the entire episode. And upon further reflection, the soldier recounted the strange vibrations he felt in the underground facility akin to being near a concert speaker 
minus any audible noise. It was an odd feeling, he said, like being at the center of an inexplicable force. What did they stumble upon that day? Why were they seemingly supermen, individuals in a top secret military facility? And most importantly, where did everything disappear to in the blink of an eye? The soldier close uh, chose not to uh, disclose the names of individuals he recognized among the escort team. Despite the passage of time, DC remained high -lipped, tight lipped about the classified incident, hinting at a potential revelation that could send shockwaves through the military community. Sean Ryan, former Navy SEAL, engaged in captivating question and answer with DC long as he recounts his baffling experience during a visit to the covert underground facility at Fort Bragg. And here's their conversation. Sean Ryan, how far away from the slab did you feel the vibration? Did you feel it before you saw it? DC Long said, no, no, it was when the doors of the freight elevator opened and I looked in. I could see it. It wasn't any farther than from here to the camera pod, about six or seven feet away from me as we were walking in. But what made me stop was that it was so close. And what made me stop as close as we got I noticed that in front of me with my dad and the other escort in front of him, it was almost like hopping on a trip wire. You know, when you're on the trail, you just hit it and go. And that was the first thing I noticed. And then the closer I got, that intense vibration, I was just too curious. Yeah, I couldn't stand it. I had to figure out what it was, and I really should not have. Sean, when did the vibration stop? And DC said it didn't stop until I walked away right in the center, looking at the top of it. You could see this black box. I've tried to describe it before and it was extremely difficult. It just looked like a small black GMTK toolbox with a military mechanic would have or carry, carry, carry it around. It wasn't very big and it just had two leads that came out of it and it looked like it was wrapped in a case and that you could almost see something inside of it but it wasn't mechanical, it wasn't moving. They didn't have lights, it was just opaque, but it didn't really seem to serve any purpose. But the other boulder had the same thing on top of it. Sean, are you saying you saw two boulders and a slab? DC Long, yes, and they were all in all three of them at the same time. The slab itself, the monolithic slab, was about 12 to 15 inches off the ground. Whenever I knelt down to tie my shoes, I could, I could look through it and saw the first boulder that I noticed and it was just sitting on the ground. Okay, and then I glanced back and then what I saw, the other boulder that had the same black box on top that was being moved around and that was levitating. Sean, did the slab have a black box anywhere near the monolithic slab? Where, where was that located? And DC said, yes, it did. It was on the top near the center where I was feeling most of the vibration. It was like the closer I got to it, that's where it was the most intense, at the center of the slab where the box was on top of it. During their visit, DC and his father were not allowed to take any notes or photographs. After the visit, they were asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement, an NDA. DC declined, feeling that the experience was too surreal and improbable to be taken seriously. However, shortly after this, everything changed for DC's father. His business and assets were seized, reducing him from a successful contractor to a destitute and bankrupt individual. L DC later suffered a life-threatening injury during a military exercise, potentially related to his father's mysterious experience. Following this incident, he lost contact with his father, who became homeless and seriously ill. When DC finally reconnected with his father after two years, he found him in a deteriorated state, battling cancer from the consequences of unknown events. And this is on Hows and Wives by Vicky Verma. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I really support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.